What's up everyone, it's Kadi with MoneyVest. So in this video, I wanted to go over the reverse splits that are going to take place for both TMF and LABU. So I've been getting a lot of questions on what that means, what that's going to represent, what is going to be the price action. So we're going to talk about all of that. As always, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. And again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. If you want to join, there is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. And of course, uh, this week, we're also doing our Thanksgiving sale, which I'll talk about later in the video as well. So... This right here was the announcement on November 3rd, uh, which again, a lot of guys, a lot of people have been asking uh, about this and what this means. So Direction basically is the issuer of these ETFs, TMF and LABU, and they are announcing a reverse split, okay? So they basically mentioned that they have announced it will execute a reverse split of the issued and outstanding shares of the 20-year Treasury bull three times levered ETF uh, TMF and the S&P 500 biotech bull 3x ETF LABU. We've talked about these on the channel quite a few times. And after the close of the markets on December 1st, 2023, each fund will affect reverse splits of its issued and outstanding shares as follows. And this right here is going to be the structure. So TMF is going to be splitting one for 10 and LABU is going to be splitting one for 20. Okay. So in a regular stock split, right? So let's just go over what stock splits basically are. So in a regular stock split, what happens is the number of shares uh, goes up and the price goes down, right? So when we look at Apple, when we look at look at Nvidia, when we look at Tesla, what are they trying to do? They're basically reducing the price per share right? Because it becomes really expensive for traders, for investors, for shareholders, right? So Amazon did a pretty significant split for the first time, uh, I think in over, I think ever. And Google did a pretty significant split and they're all now trading in the hundreds, $200 ranges. Um, and, and they lowered the price, but increased the shares outstanding. But a reverse split is the exact opposite, right? Reverse split is the price is going up and the number of shares outstanding is going down. So in the case of TMF and LABU, uh, since they are going to be doing a 1 for 10, TMF is 1 for 10 and LABU is 1 for 20, uh, that basically means that for every 10 shares that somebody has for TMF, they will now have one share. It'll get consolidated into one share for every 10 shares that they have. And for LABU, for every 20 shares they have, it will get consolidated into one share. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that your value is going to go down. No, splits literally don't do anything to the actual value, which is, again, the notional value of the actual market cap or the position itself, because both things are being moved, right? Either the shares are going up or down and the price is going up and down as well. So, you know, the pre-split, let's say for TMF, uh, let's say somebody owns a thousand shares, um, hypothetical, you know, net asset value of a dollar and post split is going to be a hundred shares because every 10 shares is going to be consolidated into one. And the actual hypothetical NAV is going to be $10 because it's going to increase by 10 times. And the market value remains unchanged at a thousand dollars. That is going to remain exact as is. And same thing with LABU one for 20 uh, for every 1000 shares. So again, for every 20 shares is going to get consolidated into one. So we basically just divide this number by 20 and we get down to 50. And again, the hypothetical NAV is going to increase from one to $20. And the market value is going to remain unchanged, like I said, at $1,000. Now, when it comes to fractional shares, there is going to be a little bit of a tax consequence or implication because on New York Stock Exchange, ARCA markets, you're not able to trade fractional shares. You can't really trade fractional shares here. So a fund will redeem for cash shareholders fractional shares at the fund's split adjusted NAV as of the record date. So let's say, for example, somebody has like, you know, 10.25 shares of TMF. Their 10 shares will be converted into one, but the 0.25 shares that they have, which is fractional, will be converted into cash, right? So they will be given out a cash payment and obviously will be considered as sold position, which again, whether it's a profit or a loss, they'll have to figure out the tax consequences based on that position as well. Something to keep in mind. And uh, again, the reason, the reason why these levered ETFs do this is because they decay, right? Over time, there is a lot of decay that happens and they tend to move towards a zero because they're not really constructed with any sort of assets underneath but really what's happening is that they are built with the futures options they are really just tracking the performance and the prices for uh the underlying index or underlying etfs on a day-to-day -day basis and for that reason there tends to be a lot of fees and a lot of rolling over of these options on a constant basis and as a result they do decay down to zero 
for the most part, especially the bearish ones, the bullish ones still tend to perform much better uh, over time. But the bottom line is that there is a factor of time decay that tends to happen, you know, over time. And as a result, uh, is that if the price continues to move lower, as we have already seen with um, TMF and LABU. By the way, I just want to quickly go over this, guys. Make sure that you do check out the links down below if you're interested. And we do also have the Thanksgiving sale right now with the brand new psychology course right now, 50% off. And the coupon code is going to be Thanksgiving across the board on our website. 50 to 60% off across the board on all four courses, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, options, and psychology as well. And uh, there's over 120 plus lectures between all these four courses with over 15, 20, 30 hours plus content, spreadsheets, PDF cheat sheets, you name it, everything's going to be included. And I also want to point out to the Trading Views uh, Black Friday sale up to 70% off. This is literally the most I've ever seen Trading View give out. So link's going to be down below if you're interested in joining that as well. So definitely do check out. I mean, this is literally the holiday season. You're not going to find better deals during this time uh, and at any other given time in the year. So going back over to, uh, again, TMF, you'll notice that it you know, pretty much dropped down to 383 $4. It's been selling off pretty aggressively. Same thing with LABU as well. As you can see, there's because of the decay and because of the price action, how poorly, I would say XBI, which is the biotech ETF has performed uh, in the last couple of years. So like year to date, you know, it's down a little bit over 12%. Last one year, it's down over 40, 41%. So as a result, you know, LABU and TMF have obviously sold off quite considerably. And to increase the prices to kind of maintain those listing requirements with the NASDAQ, with the NYSE, uh, they do these uh, sort of a uh, splits where they can increase the price and lower the share count as well. But like I said, in terms of the net asset value or the market value, uh, there's not really any changes uh, to the actual um, to the actual formation, right? Of course, there's going to be some price volatility as there always is because a lot of the times splits are considered somewhat bullish or bearish. If the company is doing like a regular stock split, uh, the price comes down, there's more options activity like we looked at for Tesla, NVIDIA, Amazon, Apple, Google. A lot of these companies that have actually done these stock splits have ended up being very bullish. That's been a bullish catalyst because of lower prices, more options activity, more accessibility for traders, investors who want to participate uh, at those prices. But with the reverse splits, it's kind of considered as a bit of a bearish catalyst because the price is going higher, share count is going down. Uh, but like I said, from a net asset value standpoint, from a market value standpoint, uh, there really isn't much of a difference. Now, um, now of, uh, I also want to mention that from a you know, investing perspective, levered ETS. I personally never w like to invest in this because, like I said, there's there's an element of time decay that happens over time, and they continue to kind of you know roll over, and and there's a, a lot of rolling over of fees and expenses and whatnot. Uh, so for me, these are mostly trading instruments, right? And that's really why they're created. They're built to be trading instruments uh, to take advantage of hedging opportunities or trading ideas, but they're not meant to be invested in them long term because of that factor of decay. So keep that in mind and definitely understand that there is risk involved when you are trading or even investing in levered ETFs. So hopefully this was a little bit of an understanding on what's going on. So after the end of December 1st, so after the markets close on December 1st is when this split's going to take place. Um, and then for TMF, it's going to be one for 10. LEB is going to be one for 20. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Again, links to our Discord, Patreon is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. And again, do check out the links down below for our courses, for Patreon, for everything. 16% off for Discord. And of course, 50 to 60% off on the courses. Coupon code Thanksgiving. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.